back. Welcome to the Group X podcast. Thanks for having me. Mate, thanks for being here. And you know what? We finally got it. For those that are, are listening and not watching, Beck and I tried this last night. Internet wasn't able to work. We just fiddled around with it again now, and we've finally got it. So welcome, and I'm so happy we're able to uh, to get this to work. Yeah, so. I blame Shepparton. It's where I live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. So let's kick it off right from the start, as I always do. Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us about your journey and how you got into the fitness industry and then we'll dive into uh, what you're doing in the industry yeah, as well. Of course. So I guess everything kind of started for me. I've grown up as a dancer, so kindergarten, did ballet, was introduced to jazz a little bit after that. I danced all through primary school. I danced all through high school. Loved it. Then towards like I think it was maybe the end of year 12, my friend and I thought we'd just randomly join the gym because you know why not that's what people usually do about that age um yep. <laughs> so she knew about a program called body pump so she's like you know you go into a room and you set weights up and you um you know you could do some weightlifting. i thought oh yeah we'll give that a go i remember going to her house actually um before the class and she was teaching me how to squat because i had no clue like i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> Uh, we you know, rocked up to the class, we did the class, um, and I don't really remember exactly what happened in the class, but um, all I remember is I couldn't walk for like the next, I don't know, <laughs> days. Um, that was my first like, experience yep. with, I guess, uh, a gym. Yeah. And we yep. tried different classes, so I know we tried body step, um, which yep. I, again, don't remember much from the class, but I remember thinking, how does everybody know what to do? Like the, the instructor was saying these words and I was like, how, how do you know that? How do you know that's what that is? And I, like, I sucked. I was so, so bad at it. And I thought I'd be good because I had dance experience. Um, yep. Apparently not. Uh, but you know. Well, there's a, there's a piece of plastic in the way that, you know, that that's not there when you've got dance, that's is it? it? That's, that's it. Yeah. Yep. The only thing yep. I was good at was my lefts and my rights because I, I knew that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Everything else though, like what? What's a single knee? What's a what's a hamstring curl? No idea. Um, yeah. but we persisted, we kept going back, and then we also had body jam at our gym at that time. Um so that was obviously okay. the dance one that I I loved because I was a dancer. Yeah. So those are probably yeah. the main like three things that my friend and I were doing um quite a fair bit. You know, we did the whole like two classes a day, making sure we were going like sure. first day. So we just became quite quite obsessed with it and, and really enjoyed it. Um, so that's kind of where my fitness journey, I guess, really began in the gym. Oh, yeah. I love that when we get, uh, we get addicted. Yeah. yeah. We don't realize that the journey's beginning, but you're like, hang on a second. I'm, this is cool. I can do, uh, yeah. And two times a day. And I remember back in the early, early two thousands, when I first started to get into the gym before I was, did the ha tap on the shoulder thing and someone said, oh, get in here, you can do this. Um, yeah, it was every morning. And then it became, oh, okay, hang on a second, every afternoon. And the guys in the office, because I was working for Optus back then, were like, Tony, you off to the gym? I'm like, hell yeah, because they could see that, you know, come 4.30 in the afternoon, I'd start smiling again. And that, that sounds really bad when I say that. I don't mean that my job at Optus was shit. It was just very, very different and very stressful. And my release was before work. I get to the gym at 6, do a class at 6.15 or whatever it was, enough time to shower, get over the road, start work finish at 4 30 quarter to five get back over there get into it and yeah the addiction is real is. the endorphin yes rock, it can yeah. yeah it can suck us in and i'd say that there's a, probably a lot if not all instructors out there we've probably started in that way in yeah. some some yeah, capacity definitely. where yeah this is this is addictive and i'm enjoying yeah. this and we have the moment of you mean i get paid to do this <laughs> Your whole, I remember like my whole life just like started revolving around. I'm like, well, I can't do anything um, on Saturday until 11 because I'm, I plan to do this class at nine and this class at 10. Um, every Saturday, I'm going to be there, um, you know, and like Monday yep. nights was this and Tuesday nights was this and your whole life suddenly is just like, oh, yeah, I can come up to dinner, but I'm going to go to the gym first and I'm going to do yep. this class first. It becomes yeah. part of your life. It's, you know, we're, we're – um our family are looking at heading away on uh, next week, heading up to Port Quarry for uh, for four or five days. And I was talking to Rach this morning about it. And I said, oh, so we're going to leave about seven. She said, actually, no, nah. she said, I'm, I'm going to go and do the six o'clock class. So by the time I get home, yeah, maybe, maybe like, you know, quarter to eight, eight o'clock we can leave. I was like, oh, okay. No worries. But it's, it's that where you make it part of 
you know, like you get up, you brush your teeth, you, you, you know, you, you do your, your things throughout the day. We've made it, I think, as instructors and trainers and presenters, we've made it part of our life that that's what you do. Yeah. yeah. Right? Even like, even now I still do that. We'll be at work on a Friday afternoon and I'll just be, you know, hanging out in the staff room and everyone else is ready to go home. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to go to the gym first. <laughs> Yep. Go and do a body combat class. <laughs> I'll meet you for drinks later. I've got to go and do yeah. pump first and I'll meet you for drinks yeah, at seven yeah, o'clock. That's yeah, that's it. I didn't want to say that, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love it. So what was the first ever program that you trained in? So I trained in, um, I actually trained in Shabam first. So we had Body Jam at, at the time. Um, then it transitioned. They ended up moving it to Shabam. So I did, a, a, I obviously did that class a fair bit. Then uh, the instructor, I, I don't think I knew at the time, but she knew that she was moving. Yep. So she kind of did the, yeah, tap on the shoulder. Like, you know, she put, put me on stage a couple of times and then said, oh, this might be something that you might be interested in. I was like, I reckon I could do this. Yep. I reckon I could do this. Um, yeah, so I trained in Shabam first. Um, and I remember my first class, I... Um, I obviously did the training. I did the training with Annie, which was so much fun. Yep. Then I put the microphone on to teach like my track. I think it was that I did at the training. And all I remember is I said like barely anything, like nothing came out of my mouth except maybe <laughs> like the, the moves quite possibly, hopefully yep. came out, but everything else was just, there was nothing. It was silent. And I remember thinking, Oh my God, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Yep. <laughs> I love those moments though. There's that realization, there's the panic in there as well that, oh crap, what have I done? Mm -hmm. But we all start yeah. somewhere. We all, yeah. all start somewhere. I think that's a, a big thing for instructors these days to remember, and especially Group X managers for me, is, is if someone goes off to training, they're not going to come back a rock star. They're not going to come back the best instructor ever. They need to be nurtured. We all need to be nurtured when yeah. we start something new. Yeah. And, you know, the, I think the only time I've really seen someone come back from module training that is nailing it is someone that's been teaching for a long period of time. Yes. And is just going to learn new education or new a new program or new routine or whatever. They put all the other skills they've got together with the routine they've got to do. And, you know, they're not 100%, but they're probably at 80% compared to a newbie that walks out after module training and goes, yeah, I can do this. And it's that car crash that yes you, oh dear yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all start yeah. somewhere we all start somewhere yeah. i think i'm grateful that i had a dance background because that definitely helped because it was a dance program but yeah, yeah the, the talking side of things because i'm not you know i'm not the most like out there crazy person i can be quite introverted yep. so getting up on stage was you know I, I can i've done dance concerts and all of that stuff but there's no talking with that that's that's yep. dancing okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, I think the talking side of things took me a fair bit to, to figure out and feel comfortable. And especially with Shabam, because Shabam's so, you know, it, it's, it, your personality does need to shine through. Yep. And it's an important part of, of the connecting side of it. Um, so it was, yeah, trying to feel comfortable in that new environment yeah. on stage, had my mentor next to me. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot, but you know, I got there. <laughs> This is the Group X Podcast. Yeah, no, I, I love hearing those stories. They are, yeah, the grassroots of where we, we all come from. It's nice to nice to hear that. And I think also for part of the reason why doing the, the Group X Podcast is not only to share for instructors, but also brand newbies that are looking to come into it. You know, guys, if you are listening and or hope there, there are people <laughs> that are like that listening, we all we all stumbled. We all, you know, fell over something and you've got to graze your knees before you can, you know, really learn how to walk properly. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. just happen for us overnight. And I think that's more and more the message that I try and get through to people that I'm chatting to is that just give it a shot. Just try. Yeah. Grab a mentor, grab someone that's around you. And I think more of us as instructors, we need to be mentoring or menteeing or whatever that's called, having a mentor, having someone that you can actually train up, a trainee, maybe that's the right word to use. Um, having someone you can work with and, and pass your skills on to, because if we don't, the pool's getting smaller and smaller. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I would have been a mess if I didn't have someone there yeah. to support me. And then when you train at the programs, like having, 
you know, those core instructors that you can look up to and, and ask questions and get support from is so, so important. Um, yep. So where I live here in Shepparton and we haven't got, like there's not a huge number of, of Les Mills instructors. Um, but at that time when I was training, we had, and we still do have some really high, what I would consider quite high quality um, instructors yep. here at, at where I work is at Aquamoves. Um, so I had some really great people to look up to, to ask questions, to team teach with um, and all of that stuff. So I was, yeah, super lucky, super, super lucky to have some really great instructors to look up to. Yeah, I think it's vital. We need to, even if, even those instructors that have been teaching or trainers and presenters that have been doing this for a while, we still need to have someone to voice stuff with. Oh, absolutely. You know, we've, got to have, we've got to have peers in the industry that, that we can bounce stuff off and go, yeah. oi, this is happening, you know, what do you guys think? I think that, that everyone needs to have uh, – coach isn't the right word I'm looking for at the moment, but everyone needs to have someone that that they bounce a whole lot of stuff off. Man, I still bounce stuff off Andrew Taylor. Now, yeah. Andrew Taylor and I haven't worked with each other for over seven or eight years now, but we're still that type of mates that we'll ring each other once a week and have a chat and bounce stuff off about life and whatever it is in general yes, yeah. that you need to have that person with you that, you know, you, you just, yeah, it helps you get through what you've got to get through. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to Wendy. She's probably my person that I bounce uh, off so Wendy. many ideas from yeah. Wendy. Um, Love that lady. Yeah. No, she's, she's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly enough, I actually was uh, re-listening to the podcast I did with her this morning. Um, and just shared it as well on, on social media. Yep. Those that have, have a listen, get on and have a listen. Wendy has years and years and years of experience, and her journey and her her uh, her story was um, was a good one that hit home. So definitely, yeah. so, definitely. Little, nice little plug there as well. Thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah. worked well yeah so what what other programs are you trained in shabam and yeah so shabam was my first then i trained in body step and i reckon that was not really too much longer after shabam i trained in body step um at the time i was studying at university so i was studying so my full-time job is a primary school teacher uh, cool. so i trained in shabam in my second year and i think at round maybe my third year i trained in um body step yep and part of, you know, I, I had a part-time job out at um, Big W and then I was taking some classes obviously out at Aquamoos, so some uh, Shabam and Body Step classes. But I was finding that a lot of school groups were asking for body combat and I wasn't trained in combat. And I was like, yep. oh, I'd have a, you know, a few more gigs if I trained in that program. And I participated in, in combat at that time. I can't say I have much of a martial arts background. My um, my dad does, so I got dad to help me with a few things. He's always Excellent. wanted me to, to train in Muay Thai. Um, yep. But yeah, I ended up doing the training with Nathan Jones um, in body combat and really, really yep. enjoyed it. And then, yeah, I was able to take some school groups um, through some combat classes, which was great. Cool. And I'm also trained in grit. So we actually got the training in Shepparton, which was great because normally, you know, it's a two and a half, three, yep. three and a half hour travel just to get to, Excellent. to get to Melbourne, to do anything like that. Um, so yeah. a few of us from Akamoos trained in grit, um, Brilliant. loved it. We had such a great time, really, really hard training, but so much fun. And yep. grit is, is still on our timetable, um, out at Akamoos. I don't have my own class <laughs> for that, but, um, I cover and I just launched uh, this week, launched the new one this week. Cool. Um, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> then. I trained in um, in body balance, so I did some training yep. with Inga. I did body balance with her, which was was so fun. It was beautiful. Um, she's so incredible. She's so knowledgeable, and and yeah, and that was, was yep. amazing. Um, yep. By that time, I was on the LMAP team, and Les Mills Bar have, was was coming yes. out at that time. Um, yeah, and then I was approached just to possibly do the training for bar. So body balance kind of went on the back burner for a little bit. Um, yeah. And I ended up training in bar and putting a lot of, you know, all my time and effort into that because I, um, I was trying to be on the team for that program. Yep. So yep. balance and I, we don't really have a relationship anymore, which is sad. I really need <laughs> to get back into that. Um, yep. you know, time, time was yeah. <laughs> it's a hard thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Trying to, trying to fit everything in with life. Yes. That's yep. it. So how many is yep. that? Spam step, combat, grip, balance, bar, six. <laughs> Jesus. 
And I, I thought the three that I was training was hard enough, you know, and, yeah. and doing PT. But man, that's a lot of choreography to remember, if especially if you're teaching them all. No, I don't teach. No, I definitely don't teach them all. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Not man. What would be your favourite out of all the programs that you've trained in? That is such a hard question. Um, I think naturally, I feel like body step, I naturally teach really well. Shabam though, I just can't get past, because I'm a dancer, I love, I love, it's probably more about sharing my passion for dance and I love looking out to the participants and seeing them. Uh, responding and dancing and laughing and just having a really good time. So I'm yep. going to have to say Shabam, I think, is my my fave. Yep. No, fair enough. And what what uh, the role that you've got with Les Mills? Yeah. What is your role with Les Mills? So I'm the one of the national presenters for Shabam and Body Step. So I represent yep. Victoria. I was on the bar team, but because I wasn't actually teaching that anymore post-COVID, so COVID really interrupted our gym and the programs that we offered. Um, and then we had some really bad floods in our town um, not too long ago and yeah. as in very, very bad. So our gym oh, yeah. got completely flooded um, and it was closed for like, well, I want to say best of six weeks maybe. It could have even been more than that. Um, yeah. And the gym that I work at is a council-run gym. So... Yeah. Obviously, money's a bit of a thing when it comes to putting on new programs and all of that stuff. So, bar never ended up getting put back on the on the timetable, which was a shame. Um, yep. So, I ended up just having a chat and just said, maybe I being on the team for that might not be my thing at the moment. So, they've actually yep. put me on the reserve team, which is fine. Cool. Um, I think yeah. I could back up yep. if they need need me at any point. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Shabam and Body Step is is what I present cool. for for Les Mills. Cast your mind back, if you can, to the first quarterly that you went to where you presented. Okay. My first quarterly that I – I'll go to one before I presented because my first workshop or workshop as a presenter was actually one of those big, like, Phylex ones. Okay, yep. So, like, the bar was set so high because I was, like, they presented my name and and I was – first time was was announced as a as a presenter i wasn't on the microphone i I shadowed and it was one of the greatest experiences of my life like um i was at one point in in shabam in the front row and there's a photo that's captured that i look at all the time because i just the moment i remember feeling so happy it was um so it was me and i had uh, do you know t i don't know how to say his his full name tau tau from new zealand Yes. Um, yep. So him and Michelle Dean and Rachel Newsham. So there was the four of us just at the front for one particular track. Yep. And it was just a moment of like, is this real? Like this is actually happening. This, this is amazing. Um, and yep. then body step as well. I remember being right next to Wendy, uh, which I thought was, and I remember thanking Chris going like, I don't know how you did that. You put us next to each other on stage. Um, so yep. it was just, that was amazing. But then my first workshop that I presented, I think I remember the body, body step was definitely the first one before I presented Shabam. Maybe it was like the day before. Um, it was great. It was fun. I had a great time. I remember not stuffing up. So that was a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I can't remember exactly. Like, I'm assuming I was nervous, but yeah, yeah I think it was just it was great. Yeah, think that- what I love is they're, they're, a lot of the a lot of the trainers and presenters that I've chatted to have that moment. There's one particular point. There's a where they get up on stage. There's that feeling, or there's that look. When, as you said, even from a photo, someone's taken a photo, and there's that look on your face. Yeah. I remember when when Rach went through her stuff with with Attack. It was a um, a phylax in Sydney. Yep. And it was the year before I'd started working for Les Mills, and. I just pushed myself right through to the front near this pole and took a photo. And there's a photo of this actually her face and she's glowing. And that, you know, the, 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 the quarterlies that you've been to or that I've been to where I've seen a new trainer, a new presenter jump up on stage, that, that expression in your faces is, is one that I think us as, as, uh, as instructors or as participants that are out there in the crowd, we see it and we're experiencing it with you. You know, that we see, we see, look at you and it's like, wow, 
Yeah, you can see that moment in your mind of, holy crap, I'm actually up here. I'm not down there. I'm here. Wow. You know, I've made it. I've made it to that. That was one of the goals that I wanted to achieve and to actually achieve yeah. it. And for us to see it in you guys as well is a pleasure. You know, it's really nice to be able to see that and, and um, experience it with yeah. you. So well done. Well done for that as well. You know, I think that's a, a, a brilliant thing to be able to share with you. Yeah. People. And I think it's been, I want to say, six or seven years since since I've, I've been on the team. And I don't think like a workshop goes by where I just like I am so grateful for every opportunity like when they send an email and and my name's on the list to present shabam you know at the e-workshop or at the um live workshops or to present body step and i'm just like i always sit there and go yay like this is awesome you know what an opportunity because there's so many people that you know i know are working towards that as their goals or look up to to presenters and trainers um but yeah and, and then i you know i drive home from a workshop and I'm always, I always do a lot of reflections, you know, it's a decent drive. So a lot of reflecting can happen on the way, <laughs> on the way home. And it's always just gratitude. Like, I'm just so grateful yeah. for the opportunity that I've, um, that I've been given. And um, yeah, every, every single quarter, every quarter that I present, I always, yeah. I always come home going, wow, like, that's yeah. pretty amazing. This is the Group X Podcast. Nice to hear that you are humble enough to um, to appreciate that as well. You know, I, I not and I think that I've said this previously as well. There's a lot of lot of people that are no longer on the team, on the trainer presenter team from years gone by, not just pre COVID, but you know, go back even twenty yeah. years that came and disappeared really quickly. And I call them moths. Yeah, they were there for the oh, yeah, and then they're gone. Yeah, they had their moment, one moment of going yeah yeah yeah. Oh, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. Most of the people that I've spoken to now that are on the team are very humble with it all. And, but you know what, I'm appreciative of the opportunity. I think this is fantastic. And it's not about me. I can pass this on to the other instructors or whoever's out in front of yeah. me and actually share the experience with them. And I think we're, we're starting to see more and more respect both ways. Yeah. 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 Trainers to, to instructors and from instructors to the yeah. trainers as well. I think there's been a big shift. And I think a lot of that has probably come since COVID since the the you know the mental anguish that i think everybody went through with lockdown and with all of that kind of stuff i think it's given us a different appreciation uh for what we absolutely. do absolutely and even um i did a it was a filex in sydney that we were doing um some professional kind of development stuff with the trainer presenter team um and i remember so clearly um the lady that was presenting um i think her name was sasha Sasha, Sasha. Yes. yeah so she was yeah. she was incredible yeah. this was my first experience with her and um I remember something that she said she's talking about um how you know a lot of people work towards filming like being on the the filming master class you know that's their goal and, and she really um put things into perspective when she made a comment where she said you know you'll you'll work towards filming and you'll be like oh my gosh like I've made it I have so made it now I've been asked to do a filming then you you do that filming you come off the filming and then you go, okay, are they going to ask me again? Like, was I good yeah. enough to be asked again? And, you know, some people have been and they might come off that yep. filming and go, that was amazing. Are, are they going to ask me, like, again? So it's just this constant, you know, working towards that, working towards something like that. So I kind of yep. took that and when I really... I want to be happy with where I am and be grateful for what yep. I, I've already been asked to do and the opportunities that I get from, you know, um, from e-workshops to live workshops in Melbourne to being asked to fly into state, um, opportunities in Singapore or an opportunity in um, LA that's come up for a lot of, a lot of presenters. Um, you know, the opportunity yep. that did come up in Sydney to film for that. Like, I take it and I am so grateful for every, like, yeah, every tiny thing that, that Les Mills has yep. provided because in reality I have traveled Australia purely I mean yep. I've seen planes and, and motel rooms and and, and gyms um, yep. but I can say yep. I have been to Tasmania because I did I did workshops yep. there I have been to Adelaide yeah. because I did workshops there I've been to Perth because I did you know workshops there so the opportunities yep. that yeah that they've provided have been like hand, hands down like amazing 
absolutely yeah. amazing. That, that, that acknowledgement is really nice to, to hear from you as well. I think that's a, every so often I'll, I reflect back on my days when I was working for Les Mills head office. Man, I got to travel throughout Western Australia to remote regional places in WA that in my wildest dreams, I never ever thought that I'd be going to visit. You know, yeah, some of them were a two and a half hour drive between each other, but there are a gym that hadn't seen someone from Les Mills for, you know, seven or eight years or whatever. And we're so appreciative of, of someone actually rocking up to yeah. chat to them. Um, but the yeah, same as I, you know, there's so many places I've seen because of my time with Les Mills, because of my time in the yeah. industry, you know, even prior to Les Mills stuff when I was master trainer for indoor cycle stuff, that, that the opportunities that we get to be in front of people, but to also see so much of our amazing yes. country. And then all the people, like the people that you meet when you get to do, when you get to travel like that, like um, the beautiful Lou who lives over in Perth, like she's like my older sister. I love it her pieces. And do I see her often? Like, no, never. We don't, we don't yep. see each other often. Um, but when I did get to go to Perth and, and present Shabam with her, like incredible, that wouldn't have happened. You know, like that's amazing. Yep. Um, I remember... I reckon it was my first, one of my first interstate um, workshops and I've, I've jumped on the plane and um, Maddie Braxton was, was walking down and, and I knew who he was. I don't know if he knew who I was at that point in time, but he's, um, he yep. sat next to me because Les Mills obviously would have booked the flights and, and we're sitting together and he's sitting yep. there with his headphones in and he's, you know, doing his script and I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, like you're scripting now. Like I'm like, I've been so prepared for weeks and like, <laughs> you know, he's just, he's just a man of talent. And then yep. we were obviously staying, um, they put up, there was actually quite a number of us actually staying um, in, in a motel and we went out for dinner together and it was just, we had the time of our life. You know, we haven't done a lot of travel. I've done a lot of travel since COVID um, that's impacted yep. a lot of our yep. travel, but I'm seeing a lot of presenters and trainers um, travel, you know, it's all starting to happen again now, which is really exciting. Um, yeah. But some of those times, yeah. like just the people that you meet and going out for dinner yeah. the, the night before a work class. Oh, the experiences. Yeah, you can't yeah. put a price on it. Like it's. Yeah. Yeah. They're memories Absolutely. you'll have forever. Memories that you'll be able to cherish forever. And, and you know, no, no one's ever going to be able to take them away from you and no one should either you know they're, they're stuff that you can always you know if one day you decided that you're going to step away from doing what you're doing and, and focus more on education for kids or whatever it, whatever yeah. the future may hold they're memories that you'll always have you know Rach is no longer doing anything anymore but I know that she she treasures the the opportunities that she had yeah. for filming and and the amount of training that she was doing for you know module training or yeah. aim one aim two yeah. that kind of stuff you always have she's not involved in the industry at all anymore she's she's at CrossFit you know five or six days a week and, and full-time nine to five jobs. So you get to that stage, I think, in your career where you, you can always sit back and go, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not teaching at the moment either. I haven't yeah. taught in five or six years. I haven't decided I'm not going to go back to teaching. You know, I've just had pain with two hip replacements over the last couple of years. So yeah, there is an opportunity for me to get back in there Yeah. when I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a skill set that's always going to be there. And mate, I, at the moment, I'd love to get back on a bike and teach again. Yeah. But I've got to fit in with family life, with yeah. full-time job, with all of that kind of stuff. As you said before, that juggle, that stress is real. We've got to try and find it. They're memories you'll uh -huh. have forever, which is brilliant. And thank yeah. you for sharing. No, thank you for sharing great. stuff as well. This is the Group X Podcast. Opportunity for filming. You mentioned it. Yeah. For Sydney. How was that experience for you? Can you tell us a little bit about what you went through leading up to it and also yeah. what it was like to be in front of so yeah. many people uh, as well? It was, so the opportunity obviously came up um, and from memory, I think we had to film ourselves teaching and then we were selected kind of based on that or we put our name, I can't even remember, we put our names down. Um, I was just, they told us there was opportunities to present on the microphone as well as to shadow. I put my hand up yep. saying, happy to teach on the microphone if that's what they want um otherwise yep. keen to shadow like whatever not not too fast either way um and i was communicating a lot with wendy you know about it and we both put our names down and, and and all that stuff um then i remember i was at work at the time um and i got an, got the email and my teaching partner, Michelle, at the time, um, knew that I had put my name down and I 
was you know nervous but excited to to see whether I'd get selected and yeah I got the email and it wasn't just yeah. a shadow it was to present on the microphone and okay. I remember running over to yeah. her and being like she was teaching her class and I, I don't know where my kids were maybe they were at a specialist or something and I ran over or I left them in the classroom and I ran over and I was like I, I've been chosen like this has just happened and she was so excited for me and yeah. I was so excited and I think I rang like my mom and did all of that stuff Right, and Wendy it. and um, yep. yeah, and Wendy was chosen as well, and we were just we were just pumped, so excited. So um, she's what I call my body step mama bear. She's like my mum when it comes to yep. body step. Yeah. Um, so we ended up Love staying it. together um, in in Sydney for the filming, uh, which was fantastic. Yep. So we had um, we had two rooms, two bathrooms. So we had some space when we needed it, but we had time yeah. together yeah. where she was you know mentoring me and really helping me because she had previous filming experience um, I'm so grateful yep. to have had her because I, I don't know it would have been a very different experience if I hadn't have had someone to to talk to and yep. support from. yeah yeah um yep. you know we made sure that we were both you know feeling physically strong mentally strong making sure that you know, we're always making sure we're eating enough food to get through the rehearsals because the rehearsals were quite, you know, they were quite intense rehearsals. Um, it was, you know, body step pretty much every day in the lead up. Um, so I yeah. presented two blocks of the athletic circuit. So a lot of the tracks were broken up. Some, you know, did half of this track with another presenter. Um, I was yep. I was nervous. Of course I was nervous because everyone else... Um, Besides with Hattie, <laughs> everyone else had done a lot of filmings. Like I'm talking, you know, D, I'm yep. talking Zia and Nif and, you know, Wendy. They'd yep. all done yep. lots and lots of filmings. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we the rehearsals were great. Um, we did a, like, sound check, I think it was the day before, um, which was great as well, getting on that stage for the first time. I was like, yeah, I've got this. Like, this is fine. I'm going to do absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, then the, the day came and, and we got our hair done, we got our makeup done, like that was all really cool. Took a few photos um, yep. and then all of a sudden we're like backstage and there's people in the audience and, you know, I was still feeling, feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah. um, and then they were like, all yeah. right, that guys, it's time to run up on stage. And um, I look back and I watch it now and I go, I remember exactly <laughs> what was going through my head. I, I ran up on stage and... Um, all I felt was like a sense of like I was extremely overwhelmed, like the amount of people yep. in that room all kind of cheering and screaming and you know, people had come to support me. So I heard my name a few times and a lot of familiar faces um, on the floor, which was awesome. Um, but I was a lot more overwhelmed than I thought I was going to be. Yep. You know, you think, oh, yeah, like I can do that. I can do a filming. I can be up on that stage. Uh, but it's not until you're like on there where you go, oh wait, oh, hang on a second, like oh, wait, what's the Corey? Wait, what what have I scripted? Like, yep. what's the first thing I say? Um, so all of that was was happening. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie and say I was fine because I so wasn't. I was so like, okay. oh, no, this that... is a lot. Um, yeah, it's real. Yeah, it's so and then real. Mark isn't talked it? and the and the music started, and I was like, oh wait, we're starting. Like, oh, hang on, I didn't realize. That. We were recording like it was this big thing and I'm like, I don't even know where the cameras are. Like, where am I looking? Because you couldn't really yep. see them because they were so... Oh, it, was in the... it was massive. Yeah. It was very yep. overwhelming. But um, yeah. the, uh, the energy in there as a participant, yeah. I wasn't a participant, but we're up the back yeah. because Body Bike was there. We're up the back and we, we were there for the, the couple of days to be part of the energy and the atmosphere and that kind of stuff. And to to even just be on the side of the room, the energy from instructors, the energy from the presenters was something that I'll never ever forget. You know, the, the, when you guys come out on stage, no matter what program it was, the room just erupted. You could feel the energy even by not being in the crowd over there. It's the same as uh, Les Mills Live, the yeah. events that Melbourne and yeah. then I'm assuming yeah. Singapore would have been the same thing. The, the energy just erupts because we are, we're frothers for it, you know. We're instructors. We love that energy. We love getting together and doing with our peers what we love doing most of all. And to be able to share that, especially for Sydney Filming as well was was so special because that's our team you know that's yeah. the majority of the aussie team were up there 
doing that stuff. So it's nice to have been able to share that and nice of you to share with yeah. us. Yeah, no, it was, went it was an amazing experience. Was- and yeah, no, I, I have memories pop up all the time and the photos that were captured yeah. were, were incredible. And yeah, the moment was, was, was great. I, I came off stage and yeah, I'm surprised I didn't cry because the, I don't know if you've heard but the cool down song for that release in Body Step. Um, the lyrics in there was, hey, look, mum, I made it. And it was like, yep. oh, this is really special. <laughs> like, you know, my my mum has has watched me grow and, and seen how far I've come. Yep. Um, but then also, again, having Wendy on stage, you know, just there next to me was like, yeah, you know, you can't you can't plan that yeah. you know we didn't know at the start of the year that yeah. that was going to happen like that was 2019 and just like i'm pretty sure i did yeah. there was like singapore first and then like a lot a lot happened that year like it was probably one of my like favorite years ever in my life just because yep. so many opportunities yep. presented themselves and yeah it was just that cool down and i looked over and i was like wow like this is this is pretty special this is pretty special. Uh, yeah. I love. I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Awesome. Now you've also you've had some some health issues over the last yeah, yeah. period of your life. Can you do you well, one? Do you yeah, want to share with us? That, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us what sort of what you've been through and 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 I suppose how you've come out the other end, how you've dealt with it. And, and, and I suppose, are yeah. you still dealing with it as well? Give us, send it, share yeah, us some no, information about that. it if you can. Um, I'll start kind of, I'm really bad at telling stories. My sister tells me off all the time. I'm like, long story short, and I'll be like talking for an hour. Um, but I'll try not to do that. <laughs> but it all. Um, uh, look, it's a long, long form podcast. Yeah. We've got all the time in the world. So it's all good. it all started. It's, it's not a very, it's not a very happy story. Um, unfortunately, at the, at the beginning, Um, So back in 2020, my uncle got very, very sick and the doctors just didn't really know what was wrong. There was lots of tests done, um, but yeah, they just didn't really know what was happening. Um, They ended up finding out that he had stomach cancer, but at the time that they um, figured it out, the type of cancer that it is, is um, it's very aggressive. So it had you know, he'd had it for too long and it had spread too much. So unfortunately, he um, he passed away in, in 2020. But before he passed away, um, my auntie had a chat to him about some genetic testing because he was a very healthy man, very fit, ate very well, and this kind of just came out of nowhere. So upon genetic testing, oh. they found that he carried a – um, a genetic mutation of the CDH1 gene. So it's not very common. It's not really a thing that people people know about. Um, I know a common one people kind of say yep. to me is, I'm not sure if you've heard of the BRCA gene. It's, um, that's more of a, no. it's more of a known gene, um, gen- gene mutation um, in, in women can cause, yep. can cause breast cancer. So that's usually what people kind of relate the CDH1 um, gene to. So anyway, so sure. they found that out. And so from there, uh, my, my dad got tested for the same gene mutation as well as um, their sister. So both of them unfortunately came back with um, a mutation of the CDH1 gene. And then from there, you kind of can wow. go down the family tree or go out the family tree and see who else does happen to carry this genetic mutation. Yeah. Um, this is a, this is a yeah. choice. Like you don't, People choose sometimes not to find out whether they carry the gene, which is, you know, something that I spoke about with my genetic counsellor. She said, you know, that's it's really up to you at the end of the day. Um, but yeah. I chose to find out whether or not I carried the gene. So it was just a, um, a blood test done on, on both arms and then it was a bit of a waiting game. Um, but obviously I, yeah. I came back. I um, was actually at work. <laughs> I always seem to be at work when I get a lot of these important things that happen. Yeah. Um, but I, I had booked yep, the meeting, yep. so I knew that I was going to be at work at the time. And I had spoken to one of my teaching partners about it and said, you know, I've got this meeting at lunchtime. I'm going to find out if I carry um, a genetic mutation of this gene. And if I do, it's going to be a bit of a long uh, meeting because she talks to you about, you know, what kind of the next steps are. Yep. 
So the hopes was that she'd yeah. say, you know, you, you're fine, you don't. And, you know, that would have been good, but obviously no. So she, she shared the news. Um, that teacher ended up taking my class for me and I had a really um, deep chat about what my next steps were going to be um, or the options that I had. So this genetic mutation can cause obviously stomach cancer and she at the time I think she said the the chances of me developing the stomach cancer is about 80% from yeah so throughout my life is about an 80% chance to be honest that statistic seems to change um like country to country and there's not enough there's really not enough research to be like it's definitely 80% but that 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 time was what was the knowledge that she had um so yeah. she said, you know, we can do a, I think it's a gastroscopy. So it's just a camera and they biopsy your stomach and they see if they can find any form of cancer that's already developed in your stomach. Um, but the thing with that is they can't biopsy your whole stomach. So even if they yeah. find nothing, um, doesn't mean that there's no stomach cancer in there. They might have just missed it. So that was an option. Yep. Another option was to just do nothing. Like if that's what some people choose to do. Um, I yep. chose at that time, I, I chose to obviously get the, the scope done. And then, so there were obviously two outcomes. They were going to find something or they were going to find nothing. And then again, from there, there was a lot of decisions I had to make. So if they find nothing, do I, I could have my stomach removed as a preventative. Um, or I could choose to monitor and just go back once a year and have the scope done. I was extremely anxious about it. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I saw what my uncle went through and the pain that he, that yeah. he you know, yeah. suffered towards the end and, and all of that. Um, so I was extremely anxious with the whole thing. So I had my scope done and then was was waiting for my results and um up the day i had the scope done um dr alex basudis that's who did it he came and saw me afterwards oh no actually that's wrong he didn't come see me he rang he rang because he was meant to come and see me but he ended up going somewhere so then he rang the nurses and spoke to me on the phone um and he said no i think like i think you, you didn't really see anything bad there was like one kind of pale spot but um i took a biopsy of that you know, should be right, should be fine. I was like, all right, cool. About a week passed and I still hadn't heard from him. And I was so, like, I was very, so anxious, super, super anxious. So I ended up calling my genetic counselor and being like, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I don't know what the results are. So I think she ended up contacting him being like, can you speed this up? Because she just needs to know. Um, and then yeah. <laughs> again, I was at work. <laughs> Um, but it was at night time because we had our like, parent teacher or like student learning conferences and I was sitting with some parents opposite yep. me and one of my students and my phone rang because I felt it on my watch and I've done like a little quick look and it was, it was him. And I was like, Oh, I can't, I can't answer it right now. I'm in the middle of, of these conferences. Um, and so I, obviously I left it. i got, I did a few more conferences and then we had a, like a dinner break in the staff room. So before I had the dinner break, I listened to the voicemail that was left on my phone and he didn't say much, but he didn't say, you're fine. This is the Group X Podcast. And I just went, "Yep, I think I know what, he's, what the result is without him actually sharing what it was. So, you know, I went into the staff room um, yep. and didn't really say much to many people because um, no one really knew except maybe one or two staff members at the time. Um, went back yep. to my room, finished off yep. the meetings, um, knowing I'm about to, you know, my life might change in the next hour. Um, yep. Yeah, then I, I rang him back and he said, you know, we have, we've found some early signs of stomach cancer. Um, do you have to have your stomach out tomorrow? No. Do you have to have it out next week? No, yep. but we recommend you do have it out sooner rather than later. And I was like, all right, okay. 
this is this is happening. Wow. Um, and then I think I went into just like fight mode and went, this this is what it is. Like I can't do much about it. Um, I won't talk too yeah. much about other family members, but um, obviously, for obviously being genetic, there were other people that had yeah. gone through it already. Um, but, uh, were booked in to go through it as yeah. well. So my brother was actually booked in at that time. And so, you know, I don't know if I've like said this to his face, but he not, he does know how much he helped me through my journey. Cause when I told him, he's like, yeah. you'll be right. Like just go in, get it done, move on with your life. You know, it sounds so easy. <laughs> go in, get it done, move yeah. on with your life. Cause you know, life is completely different now. Um, but I had that mindset. Yeah. And I said to the surgeon, like, book me in as soon as you can. Like, I don't want to waste time. I want it out. I just, I can't. Again, I was just really, I was anxious about the whole thing. I'm like, I just need it. Let's just get me and get it done so I can, yeah. I can move on with my life. Um, but obviously being in the fitness industry, that was scary because I said to the, I asked the surgeon, I was in his, in his room at the time. And I said to him, have you done this operation on somebody in the fitness industry? somebody that's quite athletic he said he, he goes no he said the only person i've done it on is someone who runs marathons and i thought okay that's my hope what you just said then um i said to him yeah. and i said do you think yeah. i'll be able to continue with what i do and i don't know if he's like required to say no <laughs> i don't know what but he said um I, yep. I can't make you any promises. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to get back into what you were doing. So I don't think I told many people that, but yep. there was a chance I might not be able to do what I was doing because I just went, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. So yep. <laughs> sit back and watch. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah. So then yeah. I, I went in, I had the surgery, um, exactly a month after my brother and I was on the phone to him every day, whether it was texting, whether it was ringing going, you know, like, okay, so day one post-surgery and I'm like, you know, I can't eat anything, can't drink anything. Like it was nothing. I couldn't do anything. Um, I was being fed um, TPN, so like a nutrient, like it's like a liquid type of thing, you know, to your veins, so you're still getting calories. Um, and then just like that was yep. it. That was that was my life for a couple, couple of days. You know, then he's like, you'll get, you'll get ice wow. chips really soon. Um, you'll get to have like clear flow. So he was just telling me the order of things of how it all works, which was really good for me because I really needed that. Yeah. Um, you know, then eventually I got to have yeah. food. <laughs> when I say food, it was, you know, like really soft, like mushy, nothing. And the pain, yeah. oh, the pain I had when I had my first like bit of food was horrible. Like it was really sickening. I, I ring my brother and I was like, is this, is this normal? He's like, yeah. He goes, stand up, move around, go for a walk, like just move. Um, and then from then on, yeah, it was just little tiny bits of food more frequently. Everything was soft for a very, very long time. I'm talking like months, months of lots of just soft, soft food. And there were lots of moments where I was like, is, is this my life? Like, are you kidding me? Like I hate, I hated food. I hated yeah food I was talking with um, my nutritionist and and I just was saying to her like food's not a friend to me at the moment like food equaled pain and that's that was it food equaled yeah. pain and yeah. and, um, and sickness and and yeah. it was really really tough really really tough because I was already like I was already thin before the surgery again because I was so nervous so I don't when I get really anxious, I tend to not eat as much. Whereas I was trying to put on weight, that that yep. failed. Um, yep. So not being able to eat much, yeah, took a toll on my body. Like I lost, I lost a bit of weight, and I was really nervous yeah. about. Yeah. Um, like I wasn't posting on social media because nobody knew. It was very. I kept it very quiet at the yeah. start, um, but I was. It sounds like you oh, had yeah. a really good support network with your brother, though, with help you through what you've yes. just explained yeah. and what you've gone through um you still, i'm going to ask a the silly question thing. how much of your stomach was removed i have no stomach at all anymore okay so talk <laughs> yeah. if you wow 
Yeah. Okay. So how do you process food? How does your body then process? And can you have, I have so many questions. Sorry. My brain is just starting to go berserk here and I don't want to intrude. I'm grateful that you're opening up and you're sharing this stuff with us. And please, if there's any questions yeah, that I'm about yeah. to ask you, you don't want to answer, just say no, you know, we can, we can not, not put them in at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm a very, can you I'm have a solids very now? when it comes to this, because if I can like help other people with similar situations, which I actually, I found that I was doing once I had kind of shared that I was going through this. I had a number of people reach out to me for support with similar yeah. situations. Um, so I'm happy, more than happy to share. Um, so yes, I, I can eat food. I can eat pretty much whatever I want, except ice cream. Ice cream never sits well with me and it's sad cause I really like it. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I can pretty much eat anything I want. The biggest thing is I need to eat smaller quantities at a slower pace with a lot yep. more chewing than previously yeah which yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it sounds simple like you know i would say to someone yeah just eat smaller amounts um and eat slower and, and chew um but when you've been doing this for such a long amount of time so i'm coming up to two years since i've had this surgery i find myself i do go back to old habits really easily so i'll like fill my plate and be yeah. like what are you doing like you can't eat that i mean you can eat that you would just feel really, really, really sick, which happens, which, it, and it happens, it does happen quite yeah. a lot. Um, to go back to the other question you asked before I forget, my esophagus is attached to my intestines. That's as far as I know. I didn't really say to the surgeon exactly, like, what are you doing? What are you connecting here? How does that work? Um, that's too much yeah. for my brain. <laughs> but it's just, yeah, esophagus to intestines is, yeah. is how my food kind of goes through me now. <laughs> This is the Group X Podcast. Wow, I, that's just blown me, like blown my mind completely that that the human body can do that as well, to be able to process stuff. But how, how did you, mentally, how did you, I mean, you said you had support from, from your brother and family and that kind of stuff there. Did, did fitness help? Did fitness and exercising help you get through? Yeah, how, yeah. So I... Um... Wow. I knew going into this, I had to be very mentally strong. And if there's anybody out there yeah. that, that need, is going through a similar thing, whether it be a different genetic mutation or, or whatever it is, I would not recommend you go through with it until you are mentally ready. Cause it is really tough. It's, it was really, really yeah. tough. Um, I, I, I don't know if this is weird because the nurses didn't say anything weird about it, but I printed photos of my family, including my uncle. Um, I printed photos of my students at school because I, I took quite a, a number of weeks, you know, a whole term, I think it was off school. Um, I printed photos of gym stuff. So the filming, um, other stuff that I've done, I printed all these photos and I'm very much, um, I'm a quote person. I love, I love quotes. So there was one quote, yep. um, well, there were two quotes really that, that I, I, I read. So I, I stuck up all the photos, my mum did, all the photos in my um, hospital room. And then I had the quotes there as well. And I'd read them. I was reading those quotes like multiple, multiple times a day. Um, so one of them was focus on the step in front of you, not the whole staircase. So I knew, yeah, like at that, that moment, you know, when I was day one post-surgery and they said, and my brother said, make sure you walk, you get up, you walk. And the nurses were like, all right, we're going. And I was like thinking to myself the whole time, this is the first step to the rest of your fitness career. So I got out of bed yeah. and thankfully I was actually, I was great. Like I was fine. I did a lap around and my mum filmed it. So I have record of it. Um, yeah. yeah, I wanted to go again, stubborn. Um, they said no, <laughs> so that was sad. Um, but I was determined. I yep. was determined. Um, the other quote that got me through it was one day you'll thank yourself for not giving up. And that one, I still, to this day, like all the time, 
I always think that yeah. one day you're going to thank yourself for not giving up. And I presented an e-workshop. I think that might've been my first like workshop back. And that, that was my like moment where I went, you didn't give up. Like there was, there were times, I think it might've been yeah. like day, whoa, day five, day six in hospital where I just was so frustrated and everything, I was in pain. I felt sick. I wasn't eating much. Mum um, wasn't there because of COVID. So she was allowed to be there for the first two days, but then she had to go. So yeah. I like I had no one besides yeah. the nurses and like shout yeah. out to, to Epworth in Richmond. The nurses were incredible. So they, you know, they really took, took good care of me. But there was one day where I just was not myself. I was very bubbly and outgoing and happy and there was one day where I just wasn't it was all just it was all too much it was me saying I want to go back to my old life like I regret this and change my mind I don't want to do it anymore <laughs> put it back in um and I had nurse after nurse coming in being like just just to check on me because they knew that I wasn't myself like I would was normally up out of bed yeah. you know face washed in clothes walking around, like annoying them, going, I'm bored, let's do something. <laughs> like I was that patient, but that day I wasn't. And they picked that up, yeah. which was really nice of them. Um, so I... Yeah. A big thing to go through, again. man. It's a, it's a bloody oh, big yeah, thing to go yeah. through. And there's been so many so many um, hurdles along the way. And, and, you know, even the other night, like I get frustrated because I when I eat, I do feel sick a lot especially if I'm trying to get enough calories in for the day I don't count calories I don't do anything like that yeah. but I know if I haven't had enough like yeah. I need I need to be eating because yeah. food is fuel and I, I need it um so I do yeah. get frustrated a lot with it still to this day um but again I just reflect and just think you know my uncle saved my life I had I had early signs yeah. of cancer and yes, what I had to do was dramatic and, and it's changed the rest of my life. Um, but he saved my life and he has saved the lives of all of my family members, so many of my family members. Um, my dad is actually yeah. having the surgery on, on Monday. So that's only a few days away. Wow. Um, you know, so yeah. yeah, we've had to go through a lot as a family, but we've become so close because of it. And he has... Yeah. He has saved our lives. He really, really has. Um, so I just keep thinking that. Yeah. I just think I'm living and I'm going to, and I know that I'm going to live a healthy life. Well, stomach cancer is not, not going to take me down because it's yeah. possible now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, so I just, again, it's, it's all about that finding what you're grateful for in life. And, and I'm grateful yeah. that he, that he saved my life. And, and yeah, so I just have to do that. Excited for your dad too right now yeah. for what he's going to be going yeah. through in the next couple of days, um, but also for being being the rock for you. You know, when when you mentioned earlier on about Muay Thai and getting into to yeah. combat, you know, there's 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 you've got a bond with yeah. your dad. You can tell that straight away. You know, you've got a bond with your family. I think that's yeah. unique and so special and and refreshing yeah. to hear as well. You know, especially with everything that we've gone through, everything you've gone through over the last couple of years. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. I I really really appreciate it i know it's um a hard thing sometimes to be able to share with people but i think as you said as well there's if you can help people in through stuff you know if anyone's going through some stuff reach really? out you know there's people around that can always help and uh are willing to listen now we've got ears yeah we don't need to take it on board but we can definitely listen and, and give you some yeah. advice or guide you through stuff or you can just be absolutely because now i've seen what it's like to start from scratch and and you know my first me being me went to the gym and tried grit once obviously this is like way after i you know i did my first yeah, exercise yeah. was five minutes um on a stationary bike and i was in pain from this the stitches were really sore and i was physically yeah. like done like i was like <gasps> what is going on that was five minutes tony five minutes i went from the fittest i've been yeah. in 2019 at filming to you know this um I'm not going to say unfit because it wasn't unfit, but it was, I couldn't last five minutes on a stationary yep. bike. You know, I was trying to do. Um, yeah. Massive surgery. Your body was telling yeah, you, hey. Yeah. And it was all nah. your abs as well. So it's all, you know, you're sitting on a bike and you're trying to be, um, yeah. have a strong core and there's just nothing going on there. 
you know, and I was trying to do bar, but I yeah. was holding like Les Mills bar, which is not a natural bar, but I was holding yeah. um, a, a bar in my bedroom, not doing upper body because I yeah. couldn't, I wasn't strong enough. And I'm, you know, doing yeah. little tonjus and plies and just trying to do something to keep my muscles working. And then once I'd kind of, you know, did a few more things, I went to Greek. And I was like, to the instructor, I'm like, Scotty, I'm here, I'm going to try it. Um, and I couldn't do burpees, like of course, clearly I couldn't do burpees. So I'm like, you know, hands down yep. and walk a foot back and walk a foot in and, you know, just all the options um, under the sun that I could do, but I was there. I love the fact, I love the fact that you, th- you thought to yourself, yeah, great. That'd be a good one to go to. Yeah, I'm going. But, but Man. I was there. Was I lifting heavy? No. Did I even have weights on the bar? I think I had like baby ones on there. Even if maybe there was nothing on the bar, yeah. you know, I wasn't doing everything everyone else yep. was doing. But I was there and I was learning yeah. what fitness is for some people who are just, just beginning their fitness journey. And every and people 100%. were watching me, like people yep. who knew me really well. Like Shepparton's not a massive town. Aquamoose is the gym I was, I was, you know, working at it and training at. So everyone knew me there and it was like, that's not, that's not Beck. Like that's not how Beck normally trains. And, and they might not yeah. have known at the time either what, what was going on. Um, but people saw me go from that back row in the corner who couldn't do a burpee anymore um, to the front row. Well, now teaching the class again, but, you know, front row heavier yeah. plates like smashing yeah. out burpees under the sun because they're so much fun <laughs> um yeah <laughs> i actually love sure. them i do love them oh, yeah. Yeah. um but <laughs> yeah like people saw that and it it was a thing yeah. it yeah it helped group it, yeah, group, yeah sorry group exercise is that is that what i said group exercise <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Good pick up, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, no, it, it, it definitely it helped me. It helped me so much. Les Mills yeah. has done so much for me in my life, and and knowing what I was walking into, knowing how a pump class works, knowing how a grip class works, like all of that. Yeah, it really helped. Really helped my recovery and got me to where I am yeah. today. And I am so glad, and I am so thankful that I didn't give up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for not giving up and, and thank you for being being raw with that as well. You know, as I said before, it's it can sometimes be very confronting and, and maybe confronting for some people to listen to as well. But I think being able to share that with with uh with yeah. people and, and share your experiences is, yeah. is so beneficial. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Hey, another yeah. couple of questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um now the the two questions I'm gonna ask you are the polar end of everything. So what do you love about the industry and what do you hate about the industry is what I want to ask you. So let's start with the things that you love about um, group exercise within the fitness industry. My experience, I'm going to say, is mostly with Les Mills group exercise training. Um, so what I love, what I love about the Les Mills side of all of that is kind of what I was just talking about. It's that um, the predictability, so knowing, knowing exactly what you're going to walk into. I love, love that about it. I love that I can go on a holiday somewhere and be like, oh, there's a body pump class on. I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to go and do it. Um, You know, but even the same with like gyms and stuff, like I love that you can just walk into somewhere and just be like, I know what that is. I know what that is. You know, fitness is, is my life and fitness is the life of so many people. And I just love how we've got that at our fingertips everywhere we go. You know, you've got the group exercise, you've got the Les Mills, you've got all that. Um, you've got gyms in, in motels now and, and, you know, cause of COVID, a lot of people have it in their own homes and just, yeah, I just, I love the accessibility of, of, of fitness to flip that though. Yep. The thing that I don't like, and that if I had a magic wand and could change would a hundred percent be the cost is money. I wish, yep. and I wish this about everything in the world at the moment, because everything just seems to be so expensive so being able to have access to a gym financially is not easy to do a class is not it's not cheap right and i i I know in shepparton i know it's not the most expensive thing in shepparton if you compare it to melbourne but it's still a cost and i would uh, if i could wave a magic wand and be like what would i change it would be the money side of things and i wish 
more people had access to the brilliant stuff that goes on in the inner gym, whether it be a class or whether it be in the gym and working with a, a personal trainer or working with a personal trainer wherever they are, it's not yeah. it's not cheap. And yeah. I, under, I yeah. obviously understand why it's not cheap. Um, but, oh, I just, wouldn't it be great if you could, yeah. More accessible. I totally, totally agree with you on that. I think it's a, um, yeah, as, as you said as well, I can see both sides. I can see the side from being a PT. Yes. Well, I'm not going to devalue what I'm offering. You know, there's a cost yeah. in what I'm offering. And same as a gym. You know what? There's a cost that I've got to make in order to keep the doors open or pay group exercise yeah. instructors. I get all that and understand all that and appreciate it. But there's there's some, for some people, the cost in that is just just not possible for them to be able to to do. And while, yes, they can do stuff at home, as we know, engagement in a group exercise space, especially mm -hmm. being involved in a group of people where there's other people around you, you're more likely to commit to something. You're more likely to attend more often yeah. than trying to do something at home. You know, I know that, as we said, the, the pandemic and everything really, it, it changed people's way of looking at fitness. And, you know, they were able to grab cans of whatever and lift them or do whatever with the broomstick or whatever it may be. Yeah. We're able to find different ways to train. But that momentum, you know, with everybody during lockdown, yeah, it might have lasted yes. for a week or two, but then stopped because we don't have that that engagement with other people, that motivation from being in that group of other people. And and for some, it's just not not a possibility. I mean, I don't know. My mortgage rates have gone up close to three hundred bucks since December last year. You know, over six months, and that's 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 a challenge. You know, it's it's. I'm hoping. Oh, we hell, I'm hoping they come down again <laughs> soon. But even even with that, the challenges financially for for you know even yeah. people that are earning decent money is still a challenge to be able to to find it and i think for for us as instructors i think sometimes yeah as an instructor we most of us would get yeah. a free gym membership yeah. somewhere or you know we're training and we're and fit and healthy sometimes to look at it from that perspective of the person that's in front of us and realize you know what yeah they're, they're what they're yeah. paying is yeah. it's up there you know it'd be Fantastic if the government or, or someone could turn around and, and do things to make it yeah. a bit easier, a bit more accessible for people. So I and totally agree with you And we've obviously got access to things like well. YouTube and there's stuff on YouTube of, of people posting their videos and what they do and all of that, which is great, which is awesome. Um, yeah. But I don't think you can beat a, a beginner, someone who's just not, doesn't know anything or much about their body and fitness I don't know how I feel about someone like that watching a video on YouTube and following along compared to walking into yep. our gym, so Aquamoves, booking um, a session with one of our, our trainers, getting, you know, assessed, talking about um, injuries or things that they're worried about or things that they, that they want out of, like, what do you want out of this? Like, what are you looking towards? What's your goals? Um, and then a program being tailored specifically for for that person, you know, like my grandma, yeah. she goes to the gym, like she's she's eighty something, like she gyms, but her program has come yep. from someone yep. who specifically tailored it towards her, right? Towards what she's so, yeah. yep, yep. I, I that's so important. So love it, love the YouTube stuff. Nothing against any of that. But if you're a beginner, like, oh, I just go to the gym, yep. work with someone, find out how to, how to do a squat properly, yep. how to do bicep curls, how to do whatever it is from someone who was trained and knows, yep. and knows what they're doing. And for a lot of people, unfortunately, yep. it's finances yep. that, that's stopping them. Um, you know, so let's get some free programs True. going, government. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Yep. Wouldn't that be yep. nice? I love it. Beck, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing you, sharing your experiences and what you've been through and what you're doing as well. I've, I've honestly appreciated chatting to you and um, knowing knowing what you've gone through as well. You know, thank you so no. to, yeah. Thank you for asking me. And what you're doing. I really haven't, yeah, shared my story all that much. So um, it was nice to kind of sit down and just, and yeah, share it. And if it supports or helps somebody out there, that's 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 great. Like, that's awesome. If anyone ever wants to reach out, like, I'm more than happy yeah. to chat. You know, it's not an easy thing to go through. And I've been super lucky with the support that I've had. Um, I'm going to say that, you know, a lot of people probably don't have, have that support. And, and if they need someone, I'm here. Like, I'm, I'm cruising. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you, guys. There will be in the show notes, there will be um, contact details on how to get us both through social media stuff as well as on the, the website for uh, Group X. So please suss it out. But yeah, Beck, thank enjoy you. your afternoon and thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.